Hello everyone, Sarah here from Project Zero Studios. Welcome to episode 5 of AU Redesign Challenge. The challenge where my patrons vote on a pop culture character and I redesign them into an alternate universe version of themselves. Well, we had a quiet couple of months this time, uh, except for my webcomic Kickstarter which was a huge success. Thanks so much to everybody for supporting me and Aaron. We appreciate it a lot. And uh, now comes the hard part of making Reckless into a book. But anyway, that's not what you're here for. You're here for character designs, so let's get into it. Here are our character poll options for this time. Thank you to whoever voted for Jordi LaForge. Poor boy, someday he'll get his time in the spotlight. <sighs> Anyway, I decided to use my new Vox Machina dice from the Legend of Vox Machina Kickstarter because they're purple and swirly, just like Twilight. As a reminder, the D10 will be the 1's place, the D6 will be the 10's place. We've got 40 different genres to pick from, so let's see. 4 is... oh, copy shop. We've already done that one. Okay. Reroll. Ooh, 21. All right. Medieval! Ooh, this should be fun. So I've taken a lot of inspiration from Prior Attire. They're a UK um, company that does a lot of historical fashion from all different eras of history. Um, and they have a wonderful YouTube series called, uh, you know, Dressing Up a Whatever Era Lady or Gentleman. And I tell you, I could just watch those videos all day. They're so fascinating. I just love seeing how the different layers of fashion change through the eras and you know what they what they include, what they leave out, how things change. I don't know. I'm just a history nerd like that. Anyway, so I started with a couple of their reference photos and I really like the the ridiculous like wooden clogs um, that aren't actually ridiculous at all. They're supposed to keep your very nice shoes out of the mud. So I thought um, trying to balance Twilight's practical side with her, you know, obvious privilege, um, trying to give her some fancy elements and also some practical ones. So I started out with something a little ridiculous, I think, that I ended up using for rarity instead. Um, went a little bit more pragmatic with this second design that is all um, hair braids and stuff. Of course, in this era, uh, women would cover their hair. Um, but I think that was only for married women, if I'm correct. The unmarried ones would still keep some of their hair loose and out, but again, I'm, I'm no history expert, so take that with a grain of salt. Very interesting designing clothes for four-limbed creatures. Because of course, in you have to balance the values of the human medieval era with the pragmatism of, you know, you have to move all these limbs, what are you gonna do? Some of the hair designs got pretty complicated. In the end, I think I went for something a little bit more... animation friendly. Still trying to decide between a couple different headdresses here. cleaning up the face. And then the final design I went with a bit more of this, what do you call it, like over gown design with the really long side holes. I 
And then of course I couldn't resist redesigning everypony else. I just had too many character ideas. So I included this little sketch in the corner just for fun. Bringing back the ridiculous hen in for rarity because of course. And tail hennen because I mean you can't ever be too extra if you're rarity. I don't know, I, I just really like the idea of Fluttershy as this pure medieval maiden. She just fits the archetype so well. I wanted to give them all different hats in addition to their hair to illustrate their personality. And finally we're on to the inking. I guess this would need a, a couple fewer lines to be animation friendly, but still I think I did a good job. I can see why they didn't want to give the ponies all clothes, though, in the show. That would have taken forever to animate. making things easier on myself. I took her colors straight from the production animation. Oh, and I don't think your your typical uh, upper class pony would wear saddlebags all the time. But again, Twilight is a bit more pragmatic, and also she's a bit of a hoarder. So <laughs> I feel like she would bring all of her scrolls with her all the time. For that little bit extra for this design, I decided to color all of the line art like they did for the show. It's not something I do very often, and I like how it turned out. Of course, it looks a bit weird with my style because I do a lot of cell shading. So I ended up cell shading the lantern as well.
here's that shading. couple more tweaks and we're done. Here's the finished design. This was so fun. It's been a while since I'd drawn any ponies so it was also good practice for me. I can't wait to see what y'all pick for me to draw next month. And to that, thank you to all of my lovely patrons who are on screen right now. If you would like to vote on who I draw next month, you can join at any level at patreon.com slash projectshirostudios. Otherwise, the videos will always be free on YouTube to watch. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this, and subscribe if you'd like to see the next one. Have a great day, great night, great whatever. Thanks for watching.